Hello, my name is Teacher Ibrahim. I hope you are fine wherever you are watching this video from. This is lesson number 64. Today, we are going to talk about the adaptations of a mammalian heart to its function. A mammalian heart is one of the organs which plays a very important role in the mammalian biological system. Remember the function of the heart is to pump blood to all the other parts of the body. The blood pumping mechanism is essential to every other mammal because it ensures that this blood reaches all the other parts of the body. Remember the heart is located on the left side side of the chest region and from there this blood that is pumped by the heart is supposed to reach as far as the lower extremities of the body such as the legs, the hands and the upper extremities of the body such as the head, the brain region at large and all other parts and besides the heart is also performing its function since the day a mammal is born to the day of its death. Since it is working throughout the life to ensure that this organism remains alive, it is playing a very important role and therefore there are some adaptations that it should be having to ensure that this role is done very easily and continuously. Remember, the heart also ability to work on its own without stimulation by the nervous system. Therefore, we say that it is myogenic in nature. It also has some special muscle called the cardiac muscle, which facilitates that myogenicity. All in all, I have prepared a simple slide show here whereby I have described up to 14 adaptations of the heart to its function. I would wish that you go through this as I'm going to take you through it to explain all those adaptations of the heart to its function. Okay, let's have a look at this now. Good, let's go. Adaptations of the heart to its function. I've been able to describe up to 14 adaptations of the heart to its function and I would like us to go through them straight away. The first one, it has a sinoatrial node which act as a pacemaker. Sinoatrial node, that term sinoatrial means sinus of the artery and it is a small node which is yellow in color i hope you are in a position to see this yellow structure down here that is uh, the sinoatrial node this part is is formed in a way that it's capable to cause contraction and relaxation in some rhythmic manner which can occur continuously throughout an individual's life therefore it acts as a pacemaker in sense that it regulates the number of beats that the heart will have in a minute let's go to the second adaptation of the heart it has septum which separates the right and the left side of the heart hence preventing oxygenated and deoxygenated blood from mixing septum is this red part here this red part over here is called the septum and it is separating the right and left side of the heart you can see this region over here is the right side of the heart while this other is the left side of the heart in this right side of the heart we have the deoxygenated blood which enters through this part here it enters through the inferior and the superior vena cava and when they enter through those two parts they get into the right auricle from the right auricle that blood moves to the right of ventricle then from there it moves to the pulmonary artery whereby it will be pumped into the lungs 
we refer to this uh, blood as being deoxygenated because it lacks oxygen and that is why it is pumped to the lungs so that the process of oxygenation can take place oxygenation is actually addition of oxygen into the blood when this blood comes from the lungs it will be able to enter into the heart again through this part here called the pulmonary vein then it gets into the left side of the heart through the left atrium or the left auricle then when it gets into this region it will be it will move to the left ventricle whereby it will be pumped outside the body through the outer outer is this yellow vessel here hope you are able to see the yellow vessels the outer from which the blood will be pumped to the body another adaptation still about this the heart has four chambers that is two auricles and two ventricles auricle is also called atrium and this uh, we have left auricle here we also have the right auricle and their function is to store blood temporarily before being pumped let's go to adaptation number four in the third slide here we are talking about a structure called a coronary artery the heart has coronary artery which enables supply of oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle the heart as an organ its function is to pump blood to other parts of the body but remember as a muscle it also needs some oxygen and that oxygen is supplied to it by use of the coronary artery so we have the coronary artery here i think you can see this part where it has uh, there's an arrow here this part yes this part is in uh, showing us where the coronary artery is its function is to supply blood to the heart as an organ okay so uh, when this heart gets blood remember it is capable of taking this blood back to the heart again to the inner side of the heart so that it can be pumped out therefore there is coronary artery and coronary vein now gets it out from the heart muscle taking it back into the heart chamber so that it can be pumped out you can see here there is a structure of the coronary artery from where it has been attached to the outer and uh, you can see the blue one representing the coronary vein we have the left coronary artery and right coronary artery in that order let's move to slide number four to explain the sixth and the seventh adaptation it has a cardiac muscle which is myogenic in nature hence it's capable of pumping blood without fatigue we refer to the cardiac muscle as being myogenic because it work on its own there is no any stimulation so it works on its own throughout the life of an organism besides being able to pump blood on its own the myogenic nature of this cardiac muscle enables the heart to pump blood without a stimulation of the nervous system so we say that it has the cardiac muscle which enables it to pump blood without nerve stimulation and it also pump blood without fatigue the word fatigue means to become tired when you look at the structure of the cardiac muscle you will realize that it is appearing like a wire netted structure and uh, it is also having some lines some in them called striations and the nuclei in them as well let's go to slide number five it has valves which prevent backflow of blood valves are these structures over here this one let me see if i can circle it for you this one here this is a valve yes that one that curved structure there is a valve which 
prevent backflow of blood so when the blood gets into the right ventricle it cannot be able to flow back to the auricle since this valve is found between the auricle and the ventricle and yet the other name of auricle is atrium we can refer to this valve as atrioventricular valve meaning the valve found between the atrium and ventricle it also have the valve tendons tendons are these whitish structures here which are attached to the valves and to the heart muscle and the function of the valve tendons is to prevent valves from folding inward so that these valves cannot fold inward so that they get back into uh, this uh, chamber called the auricles let's go to the sixth slide so that i can explain two more the heart muscle has a thick left ventricle to enable it to pump blood at a high pressure so that the blood can reach all the other parts of the body look at this part over here when you look at this muscle it is a bit thicker compared to this muscle found in the right ventricle from the right ventricle the blood is always pumped so that it goes to the lungs and that distance is a bit shorter while for the left ventricle the blood is pumped at a high pressure so that it can be able to reach all the other parts of the body since the distance is too long the blood needs to be pumped at a very high pressure and that makes the heart to have an adaptation of having a thicker left ventricle let's move to slide number seven the heart has sympathetic and vagus nerves these two nerves are capable of innervating the heartbeat these two nerves are connected with the brain at a point called medulla oblongata the sympathetic nerves uh, just from the word sympathy it since it is uh, it is helping the heart to perform the function of blood pumping its role is to increase the heartbeat so we can say that it has the sympathetic nerves which increases the heartbeat while it also have the vagus nerves which reduces the heartbeat these two are meant to ensure that the heartbeat is not too fast neither is it too slow so when the heartbeat is going to increase to a higher level than required then the vagus nerves will try to reduce it when the heartbeat uh, tends to be a bit lower then the sympathetic nerves tend to increase it a little bit in this diagram there is an indication showing the vagus nerves i hope you are able to read these ones over here those are the vagus uh, that's the vagus nerve while this one here is uh, the uh, the sympathetic nerves they are both attached to the heart as a muscle hence they regulate the heartbeat let's move to slide number eight it has Purkinje nerve fibers. Purkinje nerve fibers are the nerve fibers which are capable of receiving and spreading the waves of contraction and relaxation of the heart muscle. Remember the waves of contraction starts at this point here called the sinoatrial node, this yellow spot down here when these contraction and relaxation have been started they need to be sent throughout the entire muscles of the heart so that the contraction and relaxation is uniform therefore those waves will be able to reach this part called the atrioventricular node this node receives the waves of contraction and relaxation from the sinoatrial node from which 
they are going to send these waves throughout the muscles of the heart. You can see the Purkinje muscles, uh, the Purkinje fibers are also here. That is their name. This yellow structure all over is uh, showing uh, the distribution of the Purkinje nerve fibers. I said that it has a Purkinje nerve fiber which receives and transmits the waves of contraction and relaxation throughout the muscles of the heart. Slide number nine. Let's go on. The heart has a layer of fats which act as a shock absorber. You can see the surface of this heart muscle. All these are fats which are distributed onto it. And this one acts as a shock absorber in sense that in case the heart comes into contact with a hard object which amasses some pressure onto it, it uh, these fats may tend to absorb such kind of shock. But the amount of fats that are present on the heart varies from one organism to the other, from one species to the other, based on where it is found and to which kind of dangers is it exposed. So it has fats or a fatty layer. Number 10, which is the last one. The heart has a membrane called pericardium membrane, which prevents the heart muscles from over dilation. Remember during contraction and relaxation of the heart when pumping blood, over dilation is not supposed to, to be exhibited at any time because if that happens it may be dangerous. It may cause an individual to feel uncomfortable hence such kind of discomfort may even lead to uh, some disorders in the heart. It is covered by this muscle, uh, this uh, membrane here called the pericardial pericardium membrane and this membrane prevents it from over dilation over dilation means to increase in size in other words we can say to expand but in biology we use the term dilation the pericardium membrane also has uh, an ability to secrete a fluid that fluid is called pericardial fluid which lubricates the heart so that when the heart muscle is incre is uh, contracting and relaxing there will be no friction which is built between it and the membrane hence the uh, lubrication process uh, occurs which is very important to reduce friction thank you for watching